In the 1910s, Australian scientist William Bragg developed what is called X-ray crystallography. We've already seen how if I shine laser light through very narrow slits, the laser light produces patterns on a screen because of the way the light spreads out when it passes through the slits. The patterns vary depending on how far apart the slits are. Similar kinds of patterns are produced when X-rays pass between the atoms of a crystal. Analyzing the patterns allowed Bragg to work out the structure of the crystal, that is, how the atoms were arranged in the crystal. In 1913, Bragg used X-ray crystallography to work out the structure of sodium chloride, NaCl. Though it was commonly believed that compounds exist as small groups of atoms, he discovered that this was not the case for NaCl. NaCl, he reported, is not made of individual molecules of sodium atoms bonded to chlorine atoms. In fact, it's made of rows and rows of alternating sodium and chlorine atoms arranged into a giant so-called lattice. This Na atom is bonded not just to one Cl atom, but to these four, and to the one behind it, and if there was another layer, to the one in front of it. Likewise, this Cl atom, for example, is bonded to these four Na atoms, and also to the one behind it, and if there was another layer, to the one in front of it. The atoms join together kind of like a long strand of magnets, but form a three-dimensional lattice. The formula NaCl therefore turned out to be simply a ratio of the atoms. For every one Na atom, there was one Cl atom. At first, it wasn't clear how the atoms bonded together. However, later in the 1910s, electron shells were discovered, and scientists knew that the way the electrons arranged themselves into electron shells was going to be a major factor. By the late 1910s, scientists knew that the electron configuration of sodium atoms was 281, and that of chlorine atoms was 287. In the early 1920s, Bragg conducted more experiments on NaCl and found that the electron configuration for the sodium atoms in NaCl may actually be 2,8. In other words, they were all down one electron, and that the electron configuration of the chlorine atoms in NaCl may have been 288, or in other words, they were all up one electron. Further testing confirmed this to be the case. So what was going on? We saw how in a covalent bond, say between two hydrogen atoms, the nuclei of two different atoms attract each other's electrons into their own electron shells, and so a bond forms. But this kind of bonding doesn't occur between the Na and Cl atoms in table salt. In the 1920s, it was discovered what does occur. An Na atom has 11 positively charged protons and 11 negatively charged electrons. So overall it's neutral, since the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges. A Cl atom has 17 positively charged protons and 17 negatively charged electrons. So it's neutral too. Now what happens when sodium reacts with chlorine? Let's duplicate our atoms so that we can get a before and after. When an Na atom comes close to a Cl atom, the Cl atom pulls on the outer electron of the Na atom, since it's a relatively long distance away from the nucleus, and it becomes part of the Cl atom. Now the Cl atom still has 17 positively charged protons, but has 18 negatively charged electrons, so it has an overall charge of 1 minus. Mathematically, combining 17 plus and 18 minus gives 1 minus. It's still an atom, but because it's now charged, it's called an ion. An ion is an atom which has either gained or lost electrons. We say that the chlorine, or Cl atom, has become a Cl minus ion, and we write a minus sign as a superscript to indicate the charge. It also gets a name change from chlorine to chloride, so the Cl minus ion is called a chloride ion. Its electron configuration is now 288. The Na atom, on the other hand, has 11 positively charged protons, but now has only 10 negatively charged electrons. So we say that it now has an overall charge of 1 plus. It also has become an ion, but a positively charged ion. We call the ion an Na plus ion, or a sodium ion. Metal atoms don't get a name change when they turn into ions. Its electron configuration is now 28. Since the two atoms now have opposite charges, they attract one another and form a bond.
specifically what's called an ionic bond, since it forms between two ions. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on Atoms Episode 8, Ionic Bonding. In this episode, we look at, as the name suggests, ionic bonding. We explain how and why atoms form ions and demonstrate that the final charge an atom ends up with is determined by its electron configuration. We show students how to determine the chemical formula of an ionic compound and introduce polyatomic ions. We finish the program with a look at some of the differences between ionic compounds and covalent compounds, focusing in particular on why ionic compounds have high melting points, while most covalent compounds generally have low melting points. A transcript of the program and the student worksheet can be downloaded from our website.